What's going on everybody? Welcome to Delay Game. We are here with another episode. I'm your host Matt Mills and we're just going to be going over a little bit of sports and seeing what's been going on. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. Lord knows this has been a very interesting offseason. And we've been hearing a lot about this whole Kevin Durant trade, Kyrie Irving stuff. It's it's just been all over the place. So we're definitely going to touch on it when we do get updates. But there is still rumors about Donovan Mitchell. There are still rumors about Kevin Durant staying versus going. Kyrie Irving being traded. So we don't know yet. But as soon as we do get an update, we will revisit it. Of course, DeAndre Eaton, DeAndre Eaton's offer was matched by the Sun, so he will be a Phoenix Sun at least for the first half of the season. So time will tell. But I figured since we are getting, you know, basketball season is over. Baseball season is going on, but. More importantly than that, football season is almost here. And I can tell you now that I can't wait. Can't wait. Um, fantasy football is getting kicked off. So for me, this is this is the sport. You know, it don't get no better than football. I'm in a few fantasy leagues myself. So just to get us... You know, in the mood for it and thinking about it as we strategize for our teams. Even if you're not a fantasy football player, I'm sure that the offseason itself has gotten you excited for the season. So to ease into NFL talk, we are going to um, be referencing this article on NFL Network or well, NFL.com about the 10 most impactful NFL trades of the 2022 offseason. So probably the next couple episodes will be going over this. But I think it's a nice way just to give a nice introduction to what this season might be. Um, they have rated number one, which I um, I think is a matter of opinion. But it's Deshaun Watson going to the Cleveland Browns. Um, the Texans did receive a first and a fourth round pick. A 2023 first round and three picks. A 2024 rounds one and four pick. And then Deshaun Watson got a fully guaranteed contract once he got there for $230 million, despite his what has been going on. And we're not going to get into that. The only reason I did mention it, because there is a chance he will be suspended this year. Uh, so that's up for discussion if it's going to be four, six, or eight games. But he is suspended. So time will tell. But... We have to be honest. It, it, I mean, it's an upgrade over Baker Mayfield. Um, and I'm, I am not as hard on Baker as a lot of people are. I actually think he's a pretty good quarterback. I do think he gets a bad rep. He was injured last year, and the, I mean, we should expect more from him. But I, I'm, I'm not. You know, I don't think he's a bust. I just don't think he is what we made him to be. I think he could be. A good, successful quarterback, and we'll see what he does with the Panthers. I mean, they're trying to figure things out themselves, but they do have talent on that team, and Baker Mayfield can play the quarterback position. So we will see what happens. But nobody can lie and say Deshaun Watson is not a, a quarterback upgrade from Baker Mayfield. That's number one. And we all know how loaded that Cleveland team is. I'm a Steelers fan. That Cleveland team was loaded, you know, just from the running back position. I mean, they got two number one running backs. They have a really good tight end. They were loaded with wide receivers at the time. And the defense is talented. Miles Garrett is no joke. So, you know, we've seen Deshaun Watson in his Houston Texans days not have the greatest teams and be successful. So for me, I am interested to see how he will perform with a good team. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to get back on the field. He, he still got career ahead of him. He's still in his mid twenties, so I hope he'll be able just to get on the field and play. I'm not super excited for this, given me being a Steelers fan, that I have to play Deshaun Watson twice a year. 
But that's neither here nor there. Then number two. They have the Russell Wilson trade at number two. And I guess the Deshaun Watson trade is rated one because of his age and how much of a game changer it is. But for me, I think the performance we've been seeing from Russell Wilson, I think Denver was a quarterback away. But let me not get ahead of myself. He was treated uh, by the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks got in return Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, uh, 2022 rounds, one, two, and five picks. He got They got 2023 rounds, one, and two picks. And Denver did receive a fourth round pick back. So, without Russell Wilson, that team was talented. Denver had, I would say, easily a top five, if not a top three defense last year. They did lose no offense, but sometimes you have to make sacrifices. They had a pretty good running game. I think they have a talented set of wide receivers. And you bring in a consistent quarterback. And not just any quarterback. Russell Wilson is a talent. Russell Wilson, if we're going to be honest, has been the saving grace to the Seattle Seahawks offense for at least the last two seasons. And that's not a diss to Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf. I'm, I'm making the argument that the offense was running through him and it would not be successful without him. It's a quarterback's league, so we have to be honest that without Russell Wilson, it would not have been a great offense. The offensive line was not great. The running game was inconsistent. It was all on Russ. And if we're going to be honest, Seattle Seahawks' defense has not been above average in a little while. I would say it's average or below. So you putting Russell Wilson in this type of situation... And I think he still has years left to play. So this, to me, is a huge upgrade. And I think it, it catapults Denver into being a contender. Because they were already talented. They kept the same team in place, coaching in place, and they have a quarterback. And I'm sorry, I don't like the diss people. Russell Wilson's an upgraded quarterback. And the quarterback that they had, I was rooting for Teddy. He's very inconsistent. Teddy Bridgewater has not been the same since his injury. And I think even before the injury, he didn't have the highest ceiling. So I, I, I think he can give you good play and stretches. But he's not Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's arm, the way he can extend plays, his mobility. The Denver Broncos probably as good as a pick for the Super Bowl. Barring injury, I think they're the favorite. So I think to me, that was the most impactful trade. Because as much as I like Deshaun Watson, that makes Cleveland one of the favorites. I don't know if that automatically makes them the favorite to win the Super Bowl to me. When Russell Wilson went to Denver, we all said they're the favorites to go to the Super Bowl. So for me, that probably should be the number one. But that's a matter of opinion. But it also was a surprising trade. I will say I was shocked. I mean, I guess we all had known Russell Wilson was probably going to get traded. Just like Deshaun Watson, we, it was being talked about. It wasn't a surprise about the trade. I don't think anybody was really expecting where they ended up. Cleveland kind of came out of nowhere. And Denver somewhat kind of came out of nowhere. But this trade. This trade that they had with Tariq Hill going to the Miami Dolphins. That's what they have at number three. Um, Shocking. I don't even know if I have direct words. Because what we've seen from the Kansas City Chiefs, their offense was dynamic. Like, we... I loved watching them. I loved the fact that Andy Reid got another chance to coach. Watching that offense click with Kelsey and Hill and Nicole Hartman, it was just, they were just track stars. They was just running all over the place. And to think 
they left. Um, I, I feel like it all happened so fast. I, I was watching TV, and they said Tariq Hill requested a trade from the Chiefs. I couldn't believe it. And then maybe an hour or two later, he got traded to the, the, the Dolphins. And just like that to me, I mean, I think it brought the Chiefs a little back down to earth. Now, this doesn't mean they won't be good. And this doesn't mean that they don't have a shot to win a division. But we'll talk about it later. Their whole division got better. Because there's a few trades we didn't talk about yet. The whole division's better. This is not the moment for your team to take a hit. Now, they did sign Juju Smith-Schuster, and I'm a Juju fan. But he's not Tariq Hill. And I think every team in that division got better. Denver, obviously. We'll talk about it later. The Chargers, for sure. And the Raiders got better. I don't know if I can say they got but the, the Chiefs got better this offseason. So, just for them to take... I get it that, you know, they weren't willing to pay him what he wanted. And we'll talk about, you know, like I said, the other deals later. And we'll you'll see why this matters. But it's a huge loss for the Chiefs and a big pickup for the Dolphins. So they traded, they gave up a 2022 first round pick, second round pick, and fourth round pick. And the 2023 fourth and sixth round pick. So the reason this is great for the Dolphins are a track team. Mike Gusecki is one of the better tight ends in the league. Cedric Wilson just signed with them from the from the Cowboys. And if you were watching football last year, Cedric Wilson was a great pick. They already had Jalen Waddle, who's a track star and a good wide receiver. And you throw in Tariq Hill in the offense. Not including any of the other running backs they picked up. I mean, the do- the only reason the Dolphins won't be good this year is because Tua couldn't figure it out. And I think that's the biggest thing we have to realize. With this move being number three, Tua has no reason not to be good this year. With the talent that they have, this is Tua's year that we'll see if he has it or he doesn't. If he's that guy that's like a franchise-setting quarterback, or he doesn't. It's a lot of pressure to be under. And to be honest, they, the, the Miami organization did their best to put enough talent around him for him to be successful. And make a note that this is quarterback number one that's under a lot of pressure. We'll get to the other one who is. But I definitely think two is under a lot of pressure to have a good year and to make some noise. I, I think they need to... They can't lose in the first round. In my opinion. They can't lose in the first round. They... They gotta do something. Beyond the first round to make a difference. So... We'll touch on this. Uh, number four. Is the Khalil Mack tree... <laughs> To the Chargers, to the Los Angeles Chargers, and the Bears, I'm sorry, what they got back for Khalil Mack, they did get a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 sixth round pick. The Chargers just got richer. Um, I already thought they had a good defense. (laughs) They got one of the Bosa's. They got one of the best corners in the league. They have one of the best safeties in the league if he can be healthy. And then you get Khalil Mack in your defense. I think this could be what takes them over the hump to make more noise. I think that last year, we saw that the Chargers were able to score points. They were able to put points on the board with the best of them. I think at some point, though, when you're that high scoring, you do need a defense that's willing to make a stop. And they didn't have it. 
So what did they do? They went out and made they built their offense. They helped add to their offensive line, and then they go get Kalomet. And this is another reason I said the division's tough because I think the Chargers got better on both sides of the ball. We talked about Denver, and we're going to talk about the next one. Chiefs are in trouble. But the Chargers, I think this might be the year they can break out. And and I hate to say break out because Justin Herbert's only, I think this is his third year. But I think this is this might be the year where we take him seriously as not just a talented quarterback or one that one that can lead a team but one that's actually someone that they can build a team around. We've seen a lot of quarterbacks that can give us nice stats and be talented, but they can't lead a team. No disrespect to Kirk Cousins. He has he had many years where he put up pretty good stats. But he's never really had a team we would consider dangerous a contender making it to, you know, championships or Super Bowls. I think Justin Herbert this year will put it together and show that his talent in those points can convert into wins because of what they did. So I do think it's an impactful trade. But the one we're going to get into, and this is the last one we'll get into for today, I think should be ranked higher. And it is the Devontae Adams Shocker. Devontae Adams got traded for a first and a first and a second. And I think we've heard rumblings about Devontae wanting his money. He also did get re-signed by the Raiders such such as Tariq Hill. I don't think anybody really thought he was going to get traded. Um, I think there was some questions when Aaron Rodgers signed his deal. But I don't think... I would have thought Aaron was going to make sure that he stayed there. You know, that's his guy. Watching them play together, Devontae... Basically, Aaron Rodgers was just throwing it up. And Devontae Adams was fi- was finding it and making plays. So I would have thought, hey, in my later years, I'm not, I don't want Devontae to go. And then Aaron Rodgers signed his deal. And I think that was the moment when the shoe dropped and we all said, okay, what's about to happen? And not only did Devontae Adams get traded, he went to the Raiders. Arguably, in most people's minds, the best receiver in the NFL. And one of the, they consider one of the most talented quarterbacks in his later years, somehow or another had a fallen out to the best receiver in the league, left his team, and is now in the Oakland Raiders. Now, granted, I think the Oakland Raiders are a pretty good team. I think their quarterback is actually pretty good. I think Josh Jacobs has had some rough years, but he's pretty good. Zay Jones, pretty good. Hunter Renfro, pretty good. Darren Waller, one of the best tight ends in the game. And then you throw in Devontae Adams. I think their defense is pretty underrated. They didn't get a lot of credit. But I think if you give, and they used to play in college, but you give him a Devontae Adams... In that division, I think this Devontae Adams deal catapulted the the Raiders to being a contender. Maybe not a top contender, but I think it catapulted them to being a contender. Two, I think the Devontae Adams trade should be ranked higher because it blew up the wide receiver market. And we will hopefully talk about this in the near future. He was the first shoe to drop. Before this Tariq Hill, before Hollywood Brown, before Terry McLaurin, before all these wide the Debo Samuel situation, before all these wide receivers started demanding their money, Devontae Adams was the first one to get signed and set the bar on what these receivers, AJ Brown getting traded and getting his money. Devontae Adams was one of the first shooter drops 
to dictate what the wide receiver market was going to be. So not only did he make a team better, substantially, he he basically started a whole new wide receiver market that all of them started to follow. So for me, he should be at least three. Because there's there's news out that Tariq Hill wouldn't have asked for a trade if it wasn't for that Devontae Adams deal. Why? Because the deal he was going to end up probably being offered was less than Devontae Adams' deal. So there are reports that that, that, that Adams' deal told Tariq Hill he wanted more money now that the, the market, the standard has been set. He want more money. So we do have to value that trade a little higher. So for me, when we're talking this top five, it would be Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Devontae Adams, Tariq Hill. I could deal with Khalil Mack for right now. We'll get into the second half of this list next week. I hope you like what you heard. If you got any comments, if you like the video, please subscribe. If you have anything you want talked about, and trust me, we'll dissect it as we get into more in August and we get into the fantasy drafts. Who should you look for? What sleepers are there in these drafts? So make sure you enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And until next time, talk to you later.